The following is a comfortably zoned radio network production. Thank you, Tally Olson. First edition, comfortably zoned in a vat of pine tar. I'm the co host, Ralph Tycho. George Grimm is here. He's the other co host. How are you, George? I'm pretty good, Ralph. It's a big day for us. We got a book published. Oh, today. it is. We have our book, and uh, this podcast um, is about the book. It's about uh, writing it. It's about uh, the guests we did, memories. We're going to have uh, fun with this. It's going to keep keep the book in front of people's um, keeping their consciousness a little bit as we. As we go forward, um, it's a year and a half, George, the project was, and uh, it was fraught with the pandemic. You were sick for a while during it. You had COVID. You yeah, had some our, high... Yeah, this was our COVID project. We started March of 2020. I had a mild case of COVID, uh, I guess in the fall, and uh, I, uh, you know, my wife and I both got it from our sister-in-law, which we thank her for very much. Uh, my <laughs> wife just lost her her um, sense of smell and taste. I I had like a bad cold, I thought, and um, but I tested positive, and one one test I had actually they took. They put a swab up of each each nose, each nostril. One nostril came back positive, and the other one came back negative. So, go figure that out. It tells you what uh, science is about, and science is all we have. That's right. <laughs> That's scary. Um, would you, just off the subject of us for a second, could you believe, would have you believed that with the advent of the vaccine, that only 53% of the populace has been vaccinated in today's day and age. They rolled out enough vaccine for everybody, and for some reason, and I haven't found a definitive answer as to why, um, it's become political, and people are, are doing stupid things, like not protecting their kids. Uh, do you have? Uh, can you answer that at all? About no, some, society? some people are actually taking horse uh, dewormer for it um, down down in, down in the south. Um, right now, Ralph, you know, I don't think we have the ability to know why they're doing this because we're logical sensible people and it, it just doesn't make any sense to us i mean we all took our vaccines when we went to grammar school the, the polio vaccine we all had that little lump on our arm for years um and later on they gave mumps and and mumps and measles vaccines and george let me let me give you a stat that i heard today george washington mandated the smallpox vaccine in 1770. Yeah. How about yeah. that? Yeah. So, um, and these governors are really up in, in arms with Biden um, doing, having the audacity to protect the, the American people. Yeah. That's what it I, comes down to. Yeah, it's, and, it's become too political. It's just, I, you know, as I said, I don't think we can ever understand it because it's just beyond our comprehension. And uh, well, I ju just thought I just thought I'd get uh, confirmation on my my opinion that um, the people are doing irrational things, yes. and I want them to live because they have a book to read. For crying <laughs> out loud! Yes, they do. <laughs> I don't care if they're a Republican, Democrat. 
um, whatever you are, race, creed, nationality, read the book. You'll enjoy it. It's um, And I, I'll tell you how I know that a baseball fan is going to enjoy it. Because in our writing together, um, you were pleased with it. Along the way, you thought there was something there. And um, it, it made me happy to write with you. Uh, we had fun doing it. It was incredibly fulfilling. But then it comes down to the editing and getting it ready and, and what have you. That became arduous for us the last couple of three weeks. And... Um, so you mentioned that the, at the top of the show, it's a big day. It's a big day for us. Um, a lot of relief. It's finally up there. Uh, anybody want to take a shot at it, go to Amazon. The name of the book is Comfortably Zoned in a Vado Pine Tar. And um, you'll enjoy it. Um, I'm talking to the audience why will they enjoy it, George, in your words? Why do you think uh, this will be well, so every, much fun every chapter, to read? I mean, I mean, every chapter you're going to learn something you probably didn't know before. I enjoyed uh, the chapters about Branch Rickey and uh, Jackie Robinson, uh, some of them by uh, Ron uh, Rabinovitz. Uh, I enjoyed the, the, the chapters about Don Woodlow, who was a very inspirational story. He was, he was a blind man, and he became a, a, a color analyst for, uh, for minor league baseball. We had uh, Sherry Davis, who became the first female uh, female uh, ballpark uh, announcer. Uh, uh, public Erskine, address announcer. Uh, you know, Carl uh, Erskine told us how thankful he was to uh, be playing for the Brooklyn Dodgers. And, you know, there are so many stories of, of inside, inside stuff that people who were there, people, people who played the game, people who were there, the umpires uh, tell great stories. Um, it's, it's really a good book. You know, I uh, read it at least half a dozen times because that's how I proofread it myself. I could just read it over and over again. And about halfway through, I kept saying to myself, you know, this is a pretty good book. And... Uh, I, I hope other you people... Me, you me, uh, let, me, let me just say to the audience, um, or wh whoever's just listening, um, that just in the course of things, when things were becoming tedious for us, you just made that offhand remark that the more I read this, the more I like it, or uh, mm -hmm. I'm enjoying this, and, and you had read it three or four times... And I can't tell you what that did to to my ego, to, you know, my uh, sense of worth in all of this, because you were my basis for uh, whether or not the book was going to be good. If you didn't like it while we were doing it, it wouldn't be good. But on the other, the other point, you are the demographic, you fit the demographics of um, age-wise, what we're looking for, you have an insatiable curiosity. And we are looking for people who want to know those little things, the inside happenings of what it's like in the press box, down on the field before the game. Um, we... We have a myriad of interviews with coaches, former managers, um, just um, just a terrific book, if I don't mind saying it. And if I can't fail over it in the first show that we do, who can? That's right. That's right. <laughs> so uh, uh, it's a big day for us. For me especially, Big George, this is the third book you've had published. Um, Noel Hind helped us immeasurably at the end. He's had uh, maybe 30 books published. For me, this is the first yeah. book. So um, I want to thank you. 
want to pay tribute to Noel Hind, who is a master at working Amazon, getting a book transposed into uh, a publishing state. And I think even you, an author who had been published by um, by uh, actual publishers, not, right. not self-publishers, were amazed at what it takes to get that thing in yes. there. Yes. Uh, I think that uh, probably Noel is going to retire after he gets done with this book because it was, <laughs> it gave him a lot of trouble. It, it gave everyone a lot of trouble. But we got it out there. He stuck with it. He got it out there. Thank God. He's a, he's a good man, and I appreciate him very much. Yes, I do too. So, I want, but he's not the only person that that made it easy for us, uh, comparatively. Um, thank David Hubler, who did a lot of the editing, and uh, was very easy to deal with. Um, good friend of the show. As a matter of fact, David Hubler is one of the um, mainstays of. Uh, the show and the show itself is reflected in the book there are um maybe seven eight people who uh are involved with the discussions with the guests on a regular basis and oftentimes their input is much more interesting than the guests oh um, yeah we have uh, you know, we we had uh, we had uh, Professor uh, uh, Peter Gombach, who always brings something interesting to the table. We got Hal Bach and George Case the Third, who who are uh, just uh, two very clear and uh, and uh, you know very clear voices who, who have opinions about the game then and the game now. Uh, Ron Rabinovitz was was very interesting with his. Uh, Tales of Jackie Robinson and Branch Ricky. We had Noel, we had Al Blumkin, David Hubler, uh, Marty Rose. Um, they, you know, and, and the one thing that came through with all these voices, I'll call them, is that <coughs> they all love the game. They all love the game of baseball. And um, that's, that's what they bring to the table. Because you can, you can tell when, when they're talking about the game, they love the game. Passionately. And there, we were all, and continue to be, we're hurt personally by the changes in baseball, and I mean baseball with a capital B, um, and how they've bastardized the game, bastardized the rules, and made it fan unfriendly. And uh, we talk about that all through the book. But uh, mostly, it's a nostalgic look back, and it makes it makes people feel good. The um, the guest, the interviews we chose for the book were with enthusiastic, knowledgeable, good memory. I mean, all these all these people have memories of what happened. 35, 40, 50 years ago, we had Dr. Uh, Dr. Brown. Um, That's right. Um, who is like 90 years old. Um, incredible recall and all in good voice, mentally and, and physically. Uh, they don't... Um, they don't lack, and they're an inspiration. Let me put it to you this way. They're an inspiration, whatever age you are, that you don't have to be old because there's some years on you. In, in other words, you could stay young and exercising your mind, uh, recalling the good things. Uh, it's a good deal for everybody. Uh, I, I wanted to say... Talk. You mentioned Marty Rose. Marty Rose and I were in second grade together. Miss okay. Ross was the teacher at PS 148. 
and we became friends. He lived in the next building. Um, we both lived in apartment 201, and um, he, 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 like I say, in the next next building. Um, at age 10, we went to the YMCA together in Flushing from Jackson Heights on the bus, 10-year-old kids. Right. I just wanted to tell, tell everybody, give an idea, times were incredibly different. They were a much innocent way of living. And much of the book goes back to those times. And they, it was flawed. It wasn't perfect. But we loved growing up. And we loved worshiping our heroes on the diamond and learning about what was going on behind the scenes. Owners, scouts, coaches go into this book. Um, you're going to well, love it, everybody. About, about uh, the Brooklyn Dodgers growing up in Brooklyn and how how the Dodgers lived in the city during the off season. And uh, I forget who it was, but he had a job uh, in a butcher shop. And... Uh, you guys used to go in and see him. Um, Carl Ferrillo it was. Carl Ferrillo. And uh, in my neighborhood in Jackson Heights, one day we wake up and uh, there's a store on 32nd Avenue or 31st Avenue, rather. And uh, this is about two or three blocks from my house. And there's schoons in a white White uh, grocers mm -hmm. alley. You look like Mr. Whipple. <laughs> you, you wouldn't. Uh, you and you're a kid. You're looking at this call, freaking Ferrillo. And it was a time when players, unless you were an absolute superstar, a Mickey Mantle, a Ted Williams, or whatever, Willie Mays, you had to work in the off season to support yourself. And what that did, it humanized them to the fans because we could identify with the guy who had a, uh, like Phil Rizzuto and Yogi Berra, they worked in clothing stores, right? you know, um, in the off season. So um, the book is a throwback. It, it'll, it'll give you... A, a sense of the way it was. And um, it also hits on a whole bunch of different stuff. Uh, PEDs. That's uh, right. And uh, the tragedy that could happen with PEDs. I don't want to ruin it uh, for anybody, but uh, there's a great story about a woman who whose son was um, a superstar on the, on the way up, you know, going to be signed for big bucks and got into steroids, and it en ended up costing him his life. Um, so it'll teach you stuff. It'll uh, entertain you. It'll make you laugh, and it'll make you cry. And, I think uh, the book covers all the bases as far as baseball is concerned, on the field, off the field. Uh, minor leagues, we have a lot about the minor league kids coming up, uh, you know, people going down, uh, people who were just playing for the love of the game. I mean, they, it's, they're playing until they're in their 40s and 50s just because they love the game so much. And uh, it's, it's a very um, interesting book. Like I said, I think it covers all the bases. And, and, and you know, it's a good book for someone who's maybe my age, who remembers, you know, uh, you know, I was uh, born in 1951, so I don't really remember seeing the Brooklyn Dodgers play or anything, but I've certainly kn I certainly know about them and heard about the players, and it's good to, uh, to, you know, to uh, learn more about them. And, um, you know, going forward, it's, it's, it's good to understand you know the the, the modern day player and um, the the troubles with the game and uh, um, the union, um, 
the, the uh, representation of, of the, the the players with the players union, and it 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 just it it just covers all the bases. I mean, if if you want to you know, learn a, about baseball, you know, at a certain time, this is the book to read. Beautiful. That's a pretty good review. I'm glad you like it, George, because oh, you I wrote do. it. I read it. <laughs> <laughs> And not only that, you read it five times for crying out loud. At least, at least, at least. Let me just tell you how much um, fun it was and what a learning experience it was working with you. You're well organized, uh, you're industrious, and um, you you have a great sense of humor. (laughs) That's it. That's important, and uh, love doing it. And I hope to um, I hope that we could can do this in this venue. We can do the same thing we were doing in the writing venue, enjoying yeah. each other's company, learning from each other, and having a good time. Because if it ain't fun, to paraphrase a famous attorney, it ain't getting done. Yeah. So um, let's keep this going, and uh, we'll do it same time next week. I'm going to spend the the rest of the evening uh, just sitting back and l- looking, reflecting on uh, these last. Uh, it's been a, like a year and a half since we've been into the project, and uh, no one can appreciate but you. Um, today, today, and what it's meant. Um, so, thank you very, very much. You're welcome, Ralph. It was a pleasure. Um, right. And you know, um, maybe uh, about a year from now, we'll come out with volume two. Who knows? Uh, it could be on basketball. It could be on hockey. Well, you got more going on hockey. Tell, tell the audience about your. Uh, writing career and how the New York Rangers are such a big part of it. Well, my my my, my father brought me to a uh, some Ranger games at the Old Garden when I was a very young. And after the game, he brought me down to the ice and showed me the penalty box and the players' benches, and he pointed up to the press box and everything. And he kind of imparted on me that this was our team, so I really didn't have a choice in the matter. But um, but through the years, the Rangers have been very good to me. I've been I've been writing about them since not like 1985, and uh, just in the past four or five years, I've had two uh, books published. Uh, we did everything but win about the Emil Francis era and Guardians of the Goal about the history of Ranger goaltending, and now I'm writing um, for Stan Frischler's newsletter and. Um, doing a couple other things um, like that. I have a, a Retro Rangers um, a column on InsideHockey.com, and um, your writing about the Rangers has really been very good to me. The, the, the Rangers players of the Emil Francis era were really, really nice to talk to. It was really a thrill to be able to call these guys up who I grew up watching and interview them and ask them questions and, 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 you know, ask them, you know, real, real questions, not just, you know, how did you score that goal, but, you know, uh, and, you know, how they felt during games and, uh, before and after, and, you, you know, really get into the, um, the, the, the players of that time. And, you know, I had a good time writing that. And I had a good time writing this book too. I, like I said, I, I, I learned a lot every Every chapter, I, I I learned a lot. Some chapters I was I'm more um, I liked more than others, but I I, I liked them all, and uh, we had a good time writing it. So, okay, and on, and on a future well. episode, not today, we will tell the audience how we were most influenced by George Will. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just leave. I'll, I'll just leave that hanging into, until a, a proper time. 
Um, yeah, I don't know if we want to talk about that, but we, but if you want to, it's your podcast, Ralph. Uh, so we'll see if we go. Uh, what do we got to lose? We're published for Christ's sake. <laughs> Yeah. Love you, George. We'll talk next time and uh, make it a healthy week and sit back and glow like I'm doing. I wish you were. You're in New York. I'm in California. Yeah. Maybe we'll meet up at the Library of Congress and take yeah. some pictures. Yeah. yeah. Now, you know, one thing I want to say, you know, waiting for the book to come out this afternoon, it's like waiting for a, a, a 500-something page baby to come out. Because uh, it, was, it was a long wait. We had talked about this this afternoon, but, um, it, you know, the book is, is over 500 pages, and waiting for it to come out was just unbearable. And don't forget, I'm on the East Coast, so I had three more hours of waiting than you guys did. So uh, it was tough. Well, but, I've got 24 hours a day that I was waiting. I'd wake up in the middle of the night, and I'd check the email to see what's, it, what's <laughs> happening. And... <laughs> And we were both along the same lines. I think our heroine was Carly Simon, Anticipation. And that leads into, you gave me a quote about Anticipation when we were chatting on the phone the other day. Help calm me down. What was it? Oh, was that, um, yeah, uh, uh, Gene Wilder in, um, in Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. There's a scene where he says, the anticipation is killing me. I hope it lasts. And um, <laughs> it, was, it was a good scene at the time. Well, um, let's not make it a Peggy Lee. No. All right. Thank you, George. Talk to you next week. Thanks for listening, everybody. The podcast has been fun. The book was fun. It's a great day. Thanks again. All right. Take it easy, everybody. Bye-bye. Adios and happy trails. The proceeding has been a comfortably zoned network production. You are advised to keep your dreams wet, your humor dry, your children and grandchildren out of military recruiting offices and off the laps of clerics who wear dresses. Thank you for listening, everyone. Happy trails.